ये कौन भोजिनो प्रभु तुम्हारा चरण अशोक भयामृत पूर्ण सर्व खण सकल चारिया तो चरण कमल उड़िया चे अमीना था कव पद ते पाद पद्मनाथा रखी बे अमारे तब पाद पद्मनाथ रखी बे अमारे आर राखा कथनाहि ये भव संसारे राका आमिता व नित्य दास जाने नो ये बार अमर पालन भार एखन तुम बड़ दुख पाए आचे स्वतंत्र जीवने बड़ो दुख दुख दूर गे लो पद बरा दे पद लगिया रमा तपस्या करीला दे पद पाइया शिव शिवत्व लोभीला भिया ब्रह्म कृतार्थ हो जे पद नारद मुनि हृदय धोरीला जे पद नारद मुनि 
ধরে ধরি না সেই সে অভয়পদ শিরেতে ধরি পরম আনন্দে নাচি বাদ গুণ গাই পরম আনন্দে সংসার বিপদ হইতে অবশ্য বোধার সংসার বিপদ হইতে ভকতি বিনোদ পদ করিবে তোমার এখন বুঝিনু প্রভু তোমার চরণ তোমারা চরণ আশোক ভয়ামৃত পূর্ণ সর্বক্ষণ আশোক ভয়ামৃত পূর্ণ সর্বক্ষণ হরে কৃষ্ণ হরে কৃষ্ণ 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 হরে 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 রাম হরে রাম 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 হরে 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 রাম হরে রাম 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 হরে 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 কৃষ্ণ হরে কৃষ্ণ 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 হরে 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 রাম হরে রাম 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 হরে 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 কৃষ্ণ হরে কৃষ্ণ 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 হরে 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 কৃষ্ণ হরে কৃষ্ণ 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 হরে 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 রাম হরে রাম 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 হরে হরে বোঝিনু কব তোমার চরণ কন আশোক ভয়ামৃত পূর্ণ সর্বক্ষণ আশোক ভয়ামৃত জয় জয় শ্রী চৈতন্য জয় নিত্যানন্দ জয় দ্বৈত চন্দ্র জয় গৌর ভক্ত বৃন্দ
दया श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जया द्वैत चंद्र जया गौर भक्त वृंद गौर भक्त वृंद गौर भक्त वृंद पावन हरिनाम है कीर्तन की शिल प्रभुपाद की चैतन्य चरतामृत की ओम ज्ञान तिरंद से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षु वन्मेलित येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे वाचाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू पद चैतन सतामृत मदिर चैप्टर talks between lord chaitanya and ramanand rai we are very close to concluding the chapter probably in uh, two to three classes now uh, uh, this is actually a concluding verse 230 verse uh, for this section therefore i want to say a few words about what we have done in the previous section then we can appreciate this verse 230 mm-hmm. so the previous two sections were uh, one was about uh, you know uh first we heard about krishna tatva glories of krishna then we heard about, about radha tatva mm-hmm. and radha ara swarupa mm-hmm. then uh, about the glories of shrimati radha rani mm-hmm. then we heard the glorious pastimes of radha and krishna first about krishna then about radha then about the pastimes of radha and krishna and then we discussed about the glory of the gopis mm-hmm. oh sorry after that we discussed about the sadhana and sadhya Sadhana and sadhya. What sadhana process we have to adapt? So in that sadhana there are two parts. One is called vaidhi, another is called raganuga. Therefore, uh, first there was a presentation about the glory of gopi's love in this section, which was two two hundred and one to two nineteen. There was a discussion about how the Radha Krishna Lila's are confidential. Only gopis can appreciate the nature of uh, gopi's love. Is they never want to enjoy themselves. they only want to serve shrimati radha rani and they want to only you see uh, radha and krishna come together and jula and they want to serve them and the example is given hmm? like in a creeper if you see there may be root of the creeper and leaves and flowers and fruits in the creeper hmm? so gopis are like the leaves fruits and flowers and radha rani is like the root <laughs> if you sprinkle water on the creeper the creeper is not happy uh, hey why are you putting water on the leaf and flowers and fruits and everything go and put the water in the root why if you put water in the root then the creeper gets nourishment similarly the gopis feel that hey don't praise us you know don't glorify us and we don't want to be with krishna we want to see radha and krishna together that is their mood gopis mood very amazing mood unlike the material world and they have they have no envy <clears throat> and they have eagerness to serve and that is gopi's happiness and amazingly radharani is happiness is just opposite she feels the 10 million times more happy when she brings a gopi uh, to krishna and she sees gopi and krishna swinging together that is radharani's mood so and then there was a discussion about spiritual love versus material lust and all that so and then raganuga marg we discussed about raganuga also and uh, in uh, uh, 
in the two, 218th verse, uh, it was mentioned that Gopi Bhavamrita, uh, uh, it is beyond the Veda Dharma, uh, but completely surrenders to Krishna and render service. For example, you know, Akurara may be serving, working under Kamsa, in the palace of Kamsa, but his heart is sold out to Krishna. Uh, Bhishma may be serving in the palace of Kauravas, but his heart is given to Krishna. Mm. So, although they were serving in one place, their heart was not there. Mm. Externally, they did uh, manage the business externally, meditate on Krishna internally. That was their bhava. Mm. Similarly, the gopis also, they may be bound by some social ties in the form of the gopi, somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, somebody's brother, but uh, their hearts are all given to Krishna completely. Mm. They are all supreme lovers of Krishna. So, although the social uh, norms may bind them externally, but their hearts are sold out to the Lord. So, therefore, uh, uh, and also they are not attracted to the Vedic rituals. Like Yajnik Brahmanas were more ritualistic uh, people. They were chanting the Vedic mantras and very meticulous about the rules and regulations and they were very rigid about it. Even when covered boys came for some prasadam they didn't give, they thought that let the Agnya get over and Brahmana should eat first and then others should be fed food and all that they were thinking. And they did not know the importance of uh, feeding prasadam to Krishna, Balram and covered boys because they were more ritualistic. Therefore, uh, Rupa Goswami says, Jnana Karmadi Anabritam, he says. Uh, one should give up that foolish attachment to Jnana and Karma. Jnana leads to speculation and such attachment to Karma leads to ritualistic nature. Uh, uh, actually, ritual is only one side. Spirit plus ritual is spiritual. So, what is the spirit? That is uh, Krishna Bhavana Amrita. Uh, therefore, our society is called Krishna Bhavana Amrita. Sangha, we call it. So, they didn't have the Krishna Bhavana. Um, nor were they doing Krishna Sadhana separately for that, uh, for attaining Krishna Bhavana. They were more into rituals and rites. Uh, so, such kind of uh, superficial display of ostentatious demonstration of some uh, kind of rituals is, uh, you know, that cannot lead us to Krishna. Hmm. So, therefore, they were stuck, we can say. Speculators also get stuck in this world. Hmm. So, the, therefore, we have to, therefore, our Jadabharata, you know, Shadda Brahmati Vartate, what he did, his father wanted to make him a Karmakandi Brahman, ritualistic Brahman, but he didn't agree. Jarabharata wanted to be Paramahamsa a devotee. So, the devotees of the Lord become lovers of the Lord. Eh? Like uh, the Yajnik Brahmana's wives, they were such pure devotees. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the street vendors who would come from Vrindavan, they would narrate Krishna's pastimes. Mm. And these ladies heard about it uh, from them. And then internally, in the heart of hearts, they developed a deep respect and affection for Krishna. They remembered Krishna even while cooking, cleaning, washing, doing all the all the household. So when the covered boys came and told the Agni Brahmana's wives that Krishna Balaram have come with other covered boys, we all are hungry, we want some prasad. Oh, they were thinking, really? We have heard about Krishna, we have heard his pastimes, and we we never thought in our life we will get a chance to see him face to face. How blessed we are. Just like uh, Sometimes you uh, wish to get initiated by a particular spiritual master, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> somebody takes you to meet the uh, meet the spiritual master mm -hmm. to introduce you and your family, mm -hmm. and you would consider that a, like a golden day of your life mm -hmm. when you were escorted into the room of the spiritual master. You were sitting, and some your mentor is introducing you, your uh, your no, your husband or wife or children, everybody, and then uh, says that they want to take your shelter. You know, please kindly bless them. And the special master inquires more about your service and everything and blesses you. So, you click so many photos and everything. When you come back, there will be a big talk at home. Is it not true? Because it's a very rare meeting in life and once in a blue moon, not a very easy to attain thing. Now, because you have been worshipping him in the, you know, on the altar, you have been hearing his lectures, you have been... Uh, hearing from devotees his wonderful qualities and everything. So, you know his name, you know his form, you know his qualities, but you have never met him one-on-one -on -one personally. Eh? But to get an audience of such a great person is very rare. Similarly, for these ladies also, they had heard about Krishna, uh -huh, his name, form, qualities, pastimes, and they developed a deep devotion to him. 
But here is the opportunity where they are not just getting to see him, they are getting to serve him. Huh? So when the covered boy said, immediately they took big, big vessels and all filled with hot prasadam, varieties of prasad, and they covered it with the lid so that it will it won't get cold. Huh? And they immediately proceeded to serve Krishna. Now you may ask, but what about the husband's permission? Hmm? So that's why I told you the social barriers don't become barriers for Raganuga devotees. Hmm? So in this world, uh, average devotees may have faced difficulty uh, from their relatives, friends and everybody. But once a person becomes a Raganuga devotee, hmm, then one can cross all social barriers and run to Krishna like the Ganga flowing towards the ocean. Hmm? And the gopis arranged for Krishna Balram covered boys to sit and serve the prasadam and Krishna and covered boys ate very happily. Hmm? That is the, that's the first time in their life they got to see Krishna eye to eye. And then after eating prasad, everything Krishna told them to go back. Uh, and they said, now we don't know whether our relatives, friends will accept us back. Hmm? Uh, we actually thought that uh, we have broken a social barrier and come to you. Now we have no hope. Uh, we will remain your devotee. And then they said, maybe you will proceed back to Vindavan, but we will remain here like Vanadevatas, they said. Uh, you know, <laughs> Vanadevata means we will remain in the forest only because neither are we accepted by you, nor we will be accepted by the family. So we will remain in the forest here uh, and uh, spend the rest of our life simply doing your bhajan. Uh, and Krishna said, what are you talking? Don't worry. Uh, you go home, I can tell you, your husbands will not only welcome you back, they will admire and glorify your devotion to me. Hmm? And in fact, they will curse themselves that they have become foolish in uh, uh, becoming stuck in the rituals and rites. Hmm? And the essence of all ritual is Vedasya Sarvai, Ahameva Vedyo, Vedantakrit, Veda Videva Chaham. The goal of all Vedas is to attain Krishna. Uh, they will actually lament that they had forgotten it. Hmm? And what Krishna said actually became true. Hmm? When they went back, all the brahmanas were talking to each other. Dig, dig janmana, tibrat yattad, uh, dig kulam, dig bahugnyatam, they were saying. Hmm? Hell with our uh, brahminical kulam. Hmm? Dig bahugnyatam, hell with our great learning. Hmm? Dig janmana, hell with our high birth. Hmm? And uh, hell with all our uh, sacrificial uh, initiations. Huh? And all that they are saying. And then they are saying, Dikkulam, hmm? uh, Dikkriya uh, Daksham. Vimukha, Yetu Adokshaje. They are saying, we have become Vimukha. Means we have turned our face away from Krishna. Uh, how foolish we are. On the other hand, these ladies, they were saying, our wives, how uh, fortunate they are. They never went to the Gurukula. Hmm? They never studied the Vedas. They never learned Sanskrit. They never memorized the Chandas. They never know how to perform the Yajnas. They are simple housewives. They are cooking, cleaning, washing. But they have developed a deep devotion to Krishna. The Lord who is Yajna Purush. Yajna Purush is here behind the garden asking for prasad. And we are here doing Ahuti in the tongue of Vishnu who is standing there in the garden. Instead of giving him prasad, we are putting in the fire. We are so foolish, we are not going and meeting him. And then the brahmana said, our wives are very blessed because they saw the wives when they returned. They had developed ashtasattvika vikar in their bodies. Tears were gliding down their uh, eyes and their hair was standing on end and their bodies were trembling and they were all calling Krishna's name. Hey Govinda, hey Damodra, hey Madhava, hey Madhusudana. And they were all, that form of Krishna they saw, became imprinted in their minds. Shyamam hiranya paridam vanamalya bargha dhatu prabala natavesha manubratam se vinyastha hasta itarena dhunana nabjam karnotpala alaka kapola mukhabja hasam This is the verse there. Uh, Vishwadeva Goswami is seeing through the eyes of these ladies uh, uh, and Krishna's beautiful form. They saw he was shyamam. Uh, uh, he was in a bluish complexion. With one hand was in one of the covered boy's shoulder. Another hand he was whirling a lotus. He had curly locks of hair and a peacock feather and a pithambar. With Vaijanti Mala and jewelry, beautiful jewelry in his body. Surrounded by all the covered boys who were always uh, laughing, joking, praising him with songs. See, this is the form they saw. And they, they, their hearts melted because Krishna not only gave darshan, he accepted service from them. 
I mean, along with this covered boy, everybody ate. Uh, this was the perfection of their life. Uh, so then these gopis, I mean, these uh, ladies, Brahman wives, when they returned back, they could not forget Krishna's form at all. Uh, they became imprinted imprint in their minds. Not only that, as I told you, the Ashta Sadhika Vikara is a manifestation of their ecstasy uh, after seeing the Lord and serving the Lord. Uh, so when they came, the Brahmanas actually said, these women have gone to great heights in devotional service. They are exhibiting such ecstasies and we fools, we are stuck in our Sanskrit grammar and recitation of the shlokas. And we had, and then they said, can we go now? Because Krishna Balram may be just preparing to leave this place. Come, let's all go and meet him, offer obeisances and say sorry to him. We couldn't feed you. Be happy with the prasad that you got from our wives. And then they were about to leave and one of them said, Hey, if Kamsa's men hang around somewhere, if the spies go and tell Kamsa, Kamsa will finish us, they cut our heads. Other Brahmana said, yeah, yeah, that is also true. Then they decided not to go. Here you see, uh, the social barriers put a fear in their hearts uh, and they could not go to see Krishna because they thought, what will happen, what will Kamsa think? Uh, whereas these ladies never feared. That's Raganuga. Raganuga means, what will Kamsa think? They never feared. And what will our Yajnik Brahmanas say? They never feared. It was like a one way for them. We are going out now and we may not be accepted. They were ready to be not accepted and live lifelong in the forest. If that was what was necessary to ensure that Krishna gets some prasadam when he is hungry, they were ready for it. That is, that is a very amazing platform it is. So, we heard about Ragamark, but amongst the Ragamarga devotees, gopis are considered superior to even these Yajnik Brahmana's wives uh, also. Uh, uh, but that, that should not make us think that these Yajnik Brahmana's uh, Brahmani wives are inferior. We should not think like that. Prabhupada uh, says that all are very advanced uh, devotees, but amongst them, uh, if you really have to, de- uh, if you really have to gra- uh, put them on a grade, the gopis' uh, love for Krishna is considered to be even far, far greater than the Queens of Dwaraka hmm, are the Brahmanis uh, who came to feed him prasada. The Prabhupada says, uh, uh, and then amongst the gopis, Radharani's love cannot be surpassed by anyone. Hmm. So in this way, um, uh, uh, in the previous class, I devoted some time in explaining about Vaidhi and Raganuga. I was giving you examples like, uh, you know, red hot coal covered by ashes. <laughs> you blow it, then the hot coal comes. Similarly, our love for Krishna is hidden now. Uh, like a nails connected to your magnet, or a little girl sitting in her mother's lap, very natural position. Similarly, naturally we all get attracted to Krishna, but now we have forgotten, it's covered over. So how do we revive it? By sadhana bhakti. But by sadhana bhakti, if one is doing ritual sadhana bhakti, it is good. But one should do it along with a longing for attaining Krishna, which is called lobha. If that lobha is not there, then if somebody is saying, Prabhu, if I chant Krishna throughout my life and I follow four eggs, will I couldn't airplane come and take me? Uh-huh. Some people ask like that. Yes, we say that, uh, Prabhupada says, yes, if you do that, you will get. But at the same time, you have to also have a longing to meet Krishna, longing to serve Him, longing to see Him, longing to be with Him forever. Uh-huh. And we should have deep uh, sense of uh, gratitude to Him, respect for Him, obedience to His teachings. Uh-huh. And we should have some rasa, huh? Uh, an appreciation of Krishna, some affection for Krishna. Otherwise, without that, what will we do there if we go there? Hmm? So, therefore, the Vaidhi should take on the shape of Raganuga as we proceed. Hmm? So, it will become more and more clear as we read further. Hmm? And therefore, the example of Yashoda was given. Nayam Sukhapo Bhagavan Dehinam Gopika Sutaha Yaninam chatma bhutanam yata bhakti matamiha. Anybody becomes a follower of this Yashoda, they can attain Raga Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti. He says, same with Radharani Lalita Vishaka, same with covered by Sikshidama Sadama Madhumangal. They are all Raga Bhaktas. If anybody becomes very attracted to their spontaneous devotion to the Lord, then they are very fortunate. And uh, this spontaneous devotion does not uh, depend on any scriptural injunctions or the order of the spiritual master. Uh, order of the spiritual master is there, we accept it. But that doesn't have to push us to do bhakti. We voluntarily do bhakti. One example I'll tell you, it becomes more clear for, for us by hearing little practical real life examples, isn't it? 
like there was one uh, sanyasi had come uh, to the station by train uh, so manager was calling a devotee prabhu we need four devotees to go to the station to pick up you know maharaj and come and do kirtan you know he asked the, he was collecting devotees prabhu can you go can you go some devotees were giving some excuse they said prabhu i have to prepare for a class evening i have to give a class so can i be excused can you take somebody else so this devotee went round and round he couldn't get anybody finally he told this devotee prabhu you only have to go and this devotee said okay prabhu you know it will take some uh, half an hour for me to go to station on the way i'll read in the sumo i'll take my book with me to prepare for the program so his goal is what how to spend the time in preparation so he was preparing in the sumo also so as soon as they reached the station you know he saw that the train was half an hour late so he was very happy they went and sat in the waiting room and <laughs> preparing more <laughs> with the book and everything and in the same group uh, uh, four people there was one devotee who was not uh, appointed by the manager he had volunteered because he knows that maharaj before he had met him in uh, vrindavan before and that maharaj is coming he had only invited maharaj to please come to our place uh, and uh, as soon as he saw his name is coming he he went ran to manager and said prabhuji can i also go to receive maharaj sir oh yes prabhuji then he ran to the deity department and brought, got the garland in you know, for maharaj then uh, you know they had arranged a smaller car and he said hey why smaller car then he called a congregation member and arranged a big car very comfortable ac car he arranged for maharaj hmm? and then uh, devotees four devotees had assembled they were about to leave for session he said where is madanga where is karthal he was the one who made everybody arrange everything because you understand what i am saying he had affection for that maharaj so he wanted to welcome him very warmly very nicely huh? where is it coming from that affection is the manager telling him to put that affection hey please kindly add a little affection to your service <laughs> it is coming from inside huh? it's just pouring out huh? that affection people do feel such a love for vaishnava actually hmm? and when he went while the other fellow was sitting with his book preparing for the lecture this fellow was again and again and coming checking uh, whether the train will be on time uh, and what, what is the bogey and he would tell the devotees probably can we go to that exact uh, ac bogey and be waiting there and they would say hey, still time is there 20 minutes no no probably we should be on time last minute we should not be running so his focus is what ah sir properly <laughs> other fellow's focus is self focus correct now <laughs> so you will see that uh, in this way yeah. you know you will find that when raganuga when one goes from vaidya to raganuga vaidhi means you know, you're told to do so you do raganuga means you want to do you long to do you love to do you want to keep doing you never want to stop you want to go on forever <laughs> that is raganuga it's a it's a total uh, different game it is huh? raganuga there's a very clear cut difference between the two mm. similarly you know one time i had taken one devotee we went to mayapur dham and uh, you know night it got uh, pretty late it became 11 o'clock or so so anyway we went and slept and then next day morning we got up and went for mangalarti so then i went for the bhagavatam class the good news was is great janani was prabhu was giving bhagavatam class thrilling very happy as soon as we came to dham we took darshanam radha madhav ashtasaki and then janani was prabhu gave wonderful class then when i went to my room i saw this fellow was snoring my person who was accompanying me i shook him up and said hey you missed the class today huh? you know what a wonderful class it was why you didn't attend shrimad bhagavatam class he said prabhu i know that in our temple we have a policy that uh, everybody is supposed to put attendance for the bhagavatam class when we are in pune but when we come to mayapur i was not aware of the policy are we supposed to attend class here also he was asking i said what are you talking supposed to attend if janani was such a rare soul is giving class you missed it no no prabhu that it got a bit late i thought i will take some rest i said you can always rest when after the class you will surely you will not miss the prasadam after the class you eat prasad then you can relax why are you relaxing during the class you are missing a golden hour so now i am desperately trying to make him understand the glory of bhagavatam as a golden hour and everything but he is not feeling it golden correct na no? is this thing sleeping is golden <laughs> correct na no? so therefore you will find just as uh, doing with the heart is not the same as doing with the head 
doing with the head is not the same as doing with the hands. Because behind the hand there is skill, behind the head there is innovation and creativity, and behind the heart there is inspiration. And Vaidhi Bhakti means doing it mostly with the hands and head. At the most head. That is Vaidhi Bhakti. You are intellectually you are convinced that Krishna consciousness is actually the process because Jnana Yogi are all useless uh, parts. Uh, jnana Yoga, Karma and all that. Intellectually you are convinced because you attended Bhakti Shastri. You know, you similarly, you know, you do the service. I am supposed to do the service so I will do. At the most you may put some little innovation creativity in it because you are told to do it. But heart means you bring inspiration with you. Hmm? You bring the inspiration from of the heart or that. If somebody is inspired to do something, they will look colorful, I can tell you. Yeah. Everything, like if somebody is an inspired kirtaniyar, hmm, you hear his kirtan, you will be mad. All the words will be mad. When they hear the kirtan, the way he would sing the similar inspired Mardangam player, hmm, inspired kirtaniyar, inspired uh, uh, seminar presenter, hmm, similar inspired cook, uh, inspired uh, pujari. Hmm. Inspired book distributor. If somebody is inspired from the heart, they are self-motivated, they are self-driven, they are enthusiastic, they are determined, uh, and they will be ready to become humble and simple and respectful to anybody who can uh, help them do that service. Mm. So, therefore, Raganuga has its uh, color, very, very powerful flavor and fragrance and color, which means it is very... Actually, the whole spiritual life becomes like a garden full of fresh roses. For a devotee, as soon as one enters from the Vaidhi to Raganuga. On the other hand, Vaidhi is a little painful. It is like dragging oneself. I am supposed to do, I am told to do in Vaidhi. So, in the early stage of Vaidhi Bhakti, initially there is a initial enthusiasm because we are driven by our passion and all that. But after some time, there can be little moroseness, and the moroseness actually comes due to offenses to other devotees, hmm? uh, due to offenses. And also sins. The sins and offenses, they make us morose. Hmm? So, if one can gradually cleanse the heart of sins and offenses and comes to the nishta stage, hmm? and then beyond nishta, one comes to ruchi, and uh, ruchi becomes, uh, ruchi is mainly on different uh, aspects of devotional service, like Navavida bhakti and all that. Hmm? But when one goes beyond Ruchita Asakti stage, the focus goes from devotional service to the personality of the Supreme Lord Krishna, his name, form, qualities, activities and pastimes. And one's heart is sold out to Krishna. Uh, just like Rukmini uh, wrote a letter to Krishna. Shutva gunan bhuvana sundara shanvatam te nirvishyakarana vibarair haratonga tapam rupam drisham drishimatam akhilartha labham she is telling, my dear Krishna, ever since I heard about you, my longing to hear about you increased. I, 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 my ears became like a chataka paksha. I want to hear why today one Bhagavatam class and tomorrow another class. In between also I want to read. I want to hear more. Tell me more about Krishna, more about Krishna. So it's the same point uh, that uh, when one is in Raganuga Bhakti, the longing to hear about Krishna, longing to see Krishna, longing to serve Krishna is very, very uh, deep in that. You know? She is saying that in this world, if anybody has eyes, the only perfection of eyesight is to see Krishna. The only perfection of the ears is to hear about Krishna. Like that, she is saying. Ropam drisham drishimatam akhilartha labam. <laughs> only akhilartha labam is to engage it in Krishna's service, like that. And in this way, you find uh, Bharat Maharaj also, when he went to the forest, uh, and there is one verse which says, Yo Dustyajan Dara Sutan Suhrit Rajyam Hridis Prishaha Jahau Yuvaiva Malavat Uttamashlo Kalala Saha This verse <coughs> says Yo Dustyajan Very difficult to give up items What all he gave up? Dara, his wife Sutan, children uh, Suhrit means all the well-wishers and friends and relatives uh, Rajyam, the kingdom uh, Hridis, Prishaha, all heart-touching items. Uh, how he, what he did? Jahau, he gave it all up. How? Yuvaiva Malavat. In his prime of his youth, he gave it all up like a person passing stool in the uh, uh, washroom. As soon as he finishes passing stool, immediately 
He takes a bath and comes out. He doesn't even see it. Huh? Like that, he gave it all up, it is said. So, Prabhupada quotes his example in Nectar of Devotion uh, for uh, the word Virakti. See, Virakti and Tyag are not same. Tyag means just to give up the things of this world, but maintain attachment to those things. Uh, one may have. After giving up, also people do have attachment to the things they have given up. Therefore, like, you know, you shave and then again, next day, the beard will grow, moustache will grow again. Like that. Tyag means you give up, but then you remember them again and again, then the attachment grows again. But virakti means you lose the taste for sense gratification. That is virakti. Vigata raga. Huh? The attachment only goes away. Huh? You give up the items and you give up the attachment to those items. And that was the status of uh, Bharat Maharaj. Hmm? Therefore, although he was attracted to a deer and he apparently fell, hmm, he, his fall is not considered to fall down at all for one reason, two reasons. One reason is, fall down means if he went back to kingdom and again ruled the kingdom and he wanted to be with his wife and children and, like, and also wanted to hold the post of kingship, then he is fallen. Because he vomited those things, gave up and again he held on to them. That is considered a fallen position. But what he did, he actually was, uh, became attached to a deer and in the next life, he, although he became a deer, in that life he followed, uh, you know, very strict spiritual life. Uh -huh. He ate only dry grass. He left his birthplace and went to Palhashrama and lived with the saintly people there. Uh -huh. And also he uh, heard the Krishna Katha. He was repenting constantly. So he was actually a, a purified soul, uh, even, even though he was slightly distracted by a deer. So in this way, you can see that his lalasa for Krishna did not diminish. The fire of Krishna consciousness was slightly diverted or distracted for a few, uh, for a few years or whatever, some uh, certain period. And then it immediately became ten times more when he got the deer's body. And it became hundreds of times more when he got the body of Jadabharata. And he perfected his life. Hmm. So, therefore, this lalasa is what is required in our spiritual life. Hmm. This lalasa has to be uh, cultivated. If somebody has it, we can purchase from them. That's what I showed you the verse yesterday. Krishna bhakti rasabhavitamati kriyatam pikuto bilabhyate tatra laul yame kalam mulyam janma koti sukritir nalabhyate now I told you about the example of uh, uh, Bharat Maharaj and the gopis and all. Another example of great lalasa is Akurura entering Vrindavan. Uh, if you read the chapter, you will be amazed. Uh, Akurura, while going to Vrindavan, he is talking to his himself. Uh, it is called Akurur Manorat, that chapter. And he is saying, Kimmaya Acharitam Taptam. He is saying, what great tapasya have I done in my life to get the Uttama Shloka Darshanam is saying, uh, I am actually like a Shudra who doesn't know one letter of Sanskrit. I have not done even Akshara Abhyasa also. And uh, imagine if I am uh, admitted uh, in a Gurukula and I am made to sing Sanskrit poetry, how it will be. Huh? It's like that. You know, I am living with Kamsa and such sinful people. And here I am getting a chance to see Krishna eye to eye. I am so grateful to Krishna. And then he said also that, you know, will Krishna accept me or not? Huh? Will he think that I am Kamsa's man? No, 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 he won't think. Because I, he is in the heart of everybody, a super soul. Huh? He will understand my heart. Huh? And Krishna will accept me. And then he said, when I go to Vrindavan, Krishna Balram will be milking the cow. Balram will be wearing blue dhoti and Krishna will be wearing golden dhoti. Krishna will be wearing beautiful peacock feather. He will have a beautiful uh, blue sapphire-like body. Huh? He will be wearing a Vajayanti mala. And he will have a beautiful smile on his face. His eyes are always very attractive and merciful. So as soon as I would go and offer him obeisances, he'll pick me up and embrace me. At that time, all my sinful reactions will be eradicated. I'll become a pure devotee there. As he was thinking like this and proceeding in his chariot towards Vrindavan, Akrura, and he was proceeding. At that time, Vrindavan arrived. And then he saw the entrance to Vrindavan. The dust was there, Vrindavan dust. He immediately stopped his chariot and jumped off the chariot and buried his face in the soft dust of Vrindavan. And he cried torrents of tears. That's one verse which says there very beautifully. It says that uh, 
Dambam, uh, Damba, Mana, all these things he gave up. Hitva, Dambam, Bhiyam, Shucham. <laughs> that verse says. Uh, he gave up Dambam, you know, the Adambara of being a minister of Kamsa. He gave up that uh, identification as I am a big minister or something. Hmm? Bhiyam means he had no fear of Kamsa at all. Uh, I will display my love and if Kamsa's men go and tell him I don't care. Even if some Kamsa kills me, I have no problem. Now I am going to love Krishna. Uh, like that he thought. So he crossed the social barriers. Uh, Hitva, Dambham, Biyam. Shucham means, okay, now I am here. Uh, Kamsa not only may punish me, he may punish all my family members. He may banish our family or he may put put them behind the bars. He, he didn't have any fear also. No fear, you know, no social identification, no pride of being a minister or anything. Uh, he completely became servant of Krishna in his heart. And he rolled on the Vrajaraj, eh? you know, calling Krishna's names. Eh? So here is another example of somebody's uh, Bhakti Bhava erupting. Hmm? At the same time, there is a warning also given. One should not become a Sahajya. One should not pretend, uh, just like cinema actors, actors put some glycerin and then they cry tears. Eh? Or somebody takes some little chili powder and put in the eyes, shh, tears will come in a crying scene. <laughs> So, in that way, one should not try to pretend oneself to be very advanced in bhakti uh, in order to win the respect of others. That it's utter foolishness it is. Yeah? Because uh, if a little girl you know, wears the shoes of the mother and says, Mom, see, now I have become you. Huh? Because it's your, ch- your shoes and you are pregnant. So, I will wear your shoes and keep a pillow inside my shirt. Then I will also have a big belly like you. Yeah, you can be, but you won't get a child. <laughs> Isn't it? Your mother will beget a new child and this little girl will not get because she is a little girl. Huh? So, one should not imagine oneself to be very advanced in uh, love for Krishna. Hmm? Rather, one should feel that I have a long way to go and uh, I have to purify my heart. Hmm? This is uh, internal cultivation. Hmm? It is not external display. Hmm? That's not the goal of uh, in Raganuga. Hmm? So, in this way, we studied about the gopis, Raganuga Bhakti for Krishna. Hmm? And Yashoda's Raganuga Bhakti. So, the conclusion is given in the previous verse. We'll just read this translation. Siddha Dehe Chinti Kare Tahani Sevana Saki Bhave Payaradha Krishna Racharana yeah. After thinking of Radha and Krishna and their pastimes for a long time and after getting completely free from material contamination, one is transferred to the spiritual world. There the devotees attain attains an opportunity to serve Radha and Krishna as one of the gopis. Yeah, correct. See, here it is said that, you know, one should think of Radha and Krishna in their pastimes for a long time. Right now, in our condition stage, if we think of Radha Krishna pastimes, one may become bewildered, confused and uh, lusty because we have only seen impure man-woman relationships in this world, in movies and serials and TV and all that. So, one will superimpose our lust on the Radha Krishna and get bewildered. Therefore, what we should do? We should read Prabhupada's small books, medium books, bigger books, read the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada said Bhagavad Gita is undergraduate study. And Bhagavatam is postgraduate study. And Chaitanya Chaitanya is this doctoral study, doctorate, PhD. So study all these books and read the purpose of Prabhupada. And gradually, you know, Prabhupada purports itself will reveal to us how to grow further. Hmm? Yeah. So we told about Chidda Deha Sadhana Deha and everything. Yeah. Gopiyanu Gatyavina Aishwarya Jnani Vajileha nahi paya prajendra nandane. Yeah. Unless one follows in the footsteps of the gopis, he cannot attain the service of the lotus feet of Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj. If yeah. one is overcome by knowledge of Lord's opulence, he cannot attain the Lord's lotus feet, even though he is engaged in devotional service. Mm. Actually, if we are uh, aware, God is very great, I am very small. Huh? Then we may enter Vaikuntha or we may enter Goloka but in a Dasyaras kind of thing. Uh, so we have to, if we really want to, uh, you know, enter the uh, Lord's abode with the three primary rasas, uh, Madhurya and Vatsalya and Sakya. Hmm? 
these are all informal and very intimate relationships. So we have therefore fallen in the footsteps of gopis, he is saying. And see, worship of Lakshmi is called Vidhi Marga. So we will go to other notes. Just one minute. Two thirty, no. This is a gopi is meditating on Krishna in the forest, which I have spoken earlier, no. Yoga Gita, I spoke. Oh, there is. A... Okay, we will come back to this later. You can read it, yeah, little bit. It's very important. One can worship Lakshmi Narayan by the process of Vidhi Marg, worshipping the Lord with regulative principles according to the instructions of the Shastra and the spiritual master. But the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Radha Krishna, cannot be directly worshipped by this process. The dealings between Radha and Krishna and the gopis are devoid of the opulences of Lakshmi Narayan. The process of Vidhi Marg, following the regulative principles, is utilized in the worship of Lakshmi Narayan. Whereas the process of spontaneous service, following in the footsteps of the gopis, who are the denizens of Vrindavan, is transcendentally more advanced, and is the process whereby Radha and Krishna are worshipped. One cannot attain this elevated position while worshipping the Lord in His opulence. Those attracted like Lakshmi, for example, she worships Narayana with great opulence. Huh? Uh, Lord Narayana is called Saubagaradhe. Huh? You know, he wears mukut, he wears kundal, and he has. Lot of jewelry in his body, and uh, you know, the Vaikuntha is filled with opulences of all like gold and silver and diamond and lapis lazuli and vaiduri and all that. And Lakshmi also cooks, uh, you know, like basmati rice and ghee, such kinds of pure, very, very opulent foods, uh, chapan bog, uh, just like it's made in Jagannath Puri. So, now when Lakshmi saw, Narana is a very serious personality, uh, sober personality, Ram also is like that. Whereas her Lord, when when he is Krishna, in that form he is a jovial personality, playful personality, sporty personality, dancing personality. She became attracted. Huh? Therefore, the Nagapatnis are in one prayer singing. Kasyanu bhavosyana deva vidmahe tavangrire nusparasha adhikara yadu vanchaya shri lalana charatapo vihaya kamaan suchiram dritavrata. They are singing. Oh, even Lakshmi ji is hankering for the dust of the lotus feet of Krishna, which Krishna didn't give her till date. Huh? But he is giving it to Kaliya, our husband, they were saying. Huh? And why he couldn't give it to Lakshmi, his dust? The reason is, Lakshmi has a Mahishi Bhava. Huh? Mahishi means, I am queen of Vaikuntha. Huh? I am Patrani, that kind of feeling even uh, Dwaraka queens may have, due to which they can't adopt the life of simplicity of the gopis who actually take the gober and beat it and make uh, gober cakes, uh, who are uh, milking the cows, boiling the milk, you know, cleaning the home, and uh, loving Krishna with their hearts, uh, not in an official way. Uh, so that was becoming difficult for uh, Lakshmi. Uh, then Lakshmi is sitting, even today, if you go to Bilvavan, with folded palms. Uh, oh, Vrajabhasi, please come in December and give me kichdi. Uh, and I will wait and make me simple like you. Huh? And I will try my best to do some simple services assisting you like an apprentice. Mm-hmm. So, which means the gopis may be telling her uh, that you have to handle the gober. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to wear a very simple dress. Mm-hmm. You should not display your opulence, which may be a little difficult for Lakshmi. That's why, uh, go ahead. One cannot attain this elevated position while worshipping the Lord in His opulence. Those attracted by the conjugal love between Radha and Krishna thus must must follow in the footsteps of I, the gopis. I'll tell you a simple example. Sometimes the rich fellows come to temple you know, wearing a golden ring, you know, wearing a, you know, like a, like what do you call it, like a very costly dress with golden buttons. They come in a posh car with their wife, family and their business. Associates and all, they come. They come and you know, they take the darshan like that in front of the deities, the circumambulate. And then our devotees may give them Raja Boga or something, they take and go. But 
when they see the other fellows in the temple, they are all chanting and jumping, playing vampire, doing arati. Can they go and dance in that? So that uh, status, social status, prestige, their bigness in society and uh, their inhibitions and reservations actually make them, uh, you know, find, find this kind of uh, simple life difficult, you know. So they have some stigma. In the same manner, in the Radha Krishna worship, the opulence, you know, takes our, you know, uh, our ad- mood and attitude to a different type of feeling and experience. And then in, uh, in Vaidhi Marga, in, uh, in the worship of Radha and Krishna, one puts aside, puts, puts aside all the sophistication. There is no sophistication at all. Huh? One gives up the sophistication and one is unsophisticated, nishkapad, um, and unmotivated one lovingly serves. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Only then, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes, Only then is it possible to enter into Lord's service in Golok Vrindavan and directly associate with Radha and Krishna. Hmm. That means you can worship uh, Radha and Krishna in Madhurya and then you can enter into Golok Vrindavan. If you are having too much Aishwarya Bhava for the Lord, you can't go near Him. You, you you feel more formal relationship. Like somebody was asking recently, can't I accept God as a father and myself as a child? Hmm? And then I just remain in that position, you know. Why do you say, Prabhu, we have to enter into friendly relationship or like a parental or like a... Why can't I accept him as a father and myself? So I then looked into Prabhupada's uh, conversations. Prabhupada says, this idea of father and child uh, relationship is good for beginners. But one should not remain in that position. Eventually, you should uh, elevate yourself to Vatsalya and, sorry, Sakya, Vatsalya, Madhuri and all. And the reason Prabhupada gives is, if you accept God as a father, yourself as a child, then the child always says, Papa, mobile chahiye, Papa, bike chahiye, Papa, you know, I want this, uh, I want money, money chahiye, you know, I want some uh, money. So, you will find that children always depend on the father for material benefits and they are very happy provided by the father. So, we will remain like that, the Christians pray, no? you know, you uh, know, O Lord, the water in heaven, hallowed be the name, give us a daily bread. So, we will go to that platform. You are a father, I am a child. So, you maintain me. So, who is uh, demanding attention? Huh? No, uh, the person who is praying, he is demanding attention. Huh? Of whom? Of Lord. He is telling Lord, I am the kid to be pampered by you. So, you give me this, give me that, I'll worship you. So, therefore, Prabhupada said, this is only a neutral rasa. Huh? Mm-hmm. You have to go beyond this. Then Krishna be the darling of Yashoda. Then she is feeding him butter. Huh? So, where are the gopis? Everybody is dancing for Krishna's pleasure. Huh? Yeah. Kahate drishtanta lakshmi karila bhajana Kahate paile praje Rajendra Nandana. Yeah. The unspoken example in this connection is the goddess of fortune who worshipped Lord Krishna in order to attain his pastimes in Vrindavan. But due to her opulent lifestyle, she could not attain the service of Krishna in Vrindavan. I told you about this. Yeah. Another verse here from Bhagavatam. Nayam Shri Yonga. Punitantarate prasadaha. Sarya Oshitam Nalina Gandharucham Kutonyaha. Raso Savesya Buja Danda Grihita Kanta. Labdajisham Javudagat Raja Sundarina. What to speak of the great, uh, greatly beautiful Rajasundaris? Huh? What a great blessing they got. Why? Because, you know, although Lakshmi is very great, huh, she never had the opportunity of dancing with her Lord who put his hand, you know, around the neck or the shoulder of his consorts huh, and sang with them and danced with them. And that benediction was given to the Rasotsavesya in the Rasa dance for the gopis. Huh? Read this. When Lord Shri Krishna was dancing with the gopis in the Rasalila, 
The gopis were embraced around the neck by the lord's arms. This transcendental favor was never bestowed upon the goddess of fortune or the other consorts in the spiritual world. Nor was such a thing ever imagined by the most beautiful girls in the heavenly planets, girls whose bodily luster and aroma resemble the beauty and fragrance of lotus flowers. And what to speak of worldly women who may be very very beautiful according to material estimation. Ah. Bhagavatam quotation. Yeteshuni Prabhu Tare Kaila Lingana Dui Janegalagali Karena Krandana yeah. After hearing this, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Ramananda Rai and both of them, embracing shoulder to shoulder, began to cry. Ah. Whereas Mahaprabhu heard that verse of Srimad Bhagavatam and he went into great ecstasy, uh, Krishna putting his hand around the neck of the gopis. Eh? And he, uh, this fortune was not given to Lakshmi or any other heavenly damsels. Eh? Uh, immediately Mahaprabhu started crying eh? and both the Ramananda Rai and Mahaprabhu started weeping. Ehi mata prema veshe ratri ko aila. Ehi mata prema veshe ratri ko aila. Prata kale nija nija kariye duhe gela. The entire night was passed in this way, in ecstatic love of Godhead. Correct. In the morning, they both departed to tend to their respective duties. Vidaya samaye prabhu racharane dhariya. Ramananda Raya Kahe Vinati Kariya Before departing from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ramananda Raya fell to the ground and caught hold of Lord's lotus feet. He then spoke submissively as follows. More Kripa Karite Tomariha Agamana Dina Dasha Rahi Shodha Mora Dushtamana Shri Ramananda Rai said, You have come here just to show me your causeless mercy. Therefore, stay here for at least ten days and purify my polluted mind. But for you, there is no one who can deliver all the living entities. For you alone can deliver love of Krishna. Mm. Prabhu kahe aila shuni tomara guna. Krishna kata shuni shuddha karai temana. The Lord replied, Having heard about your good qualities, I have come here. I have come to hear about Krishna from you and thus purify my mind. Yeah. Mahaprabhu said, both of them are actually praising each other. He is saying, I have come here to hear from you. Aiche shunilon taiche dekilon tomara mahima. Radha Krishna prema rasa jnanera tumisima. Now that I have actually seen your glories, what I heard about you is confirmed. As far as the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in a loving mood are concerned, you are the limit of knowledge. Like that Mahaprabhu is glorifying. Can you imagine? Mahaprabhu certifying Ramananda Rai. Yeah. Prabhupada says, Mahaprabhu found Ramananda Rai to be the best authority in transcendental knowledge, especially like the affairs of Radha and Krishna. Dasha dine reka katha yabata mi jiva. Jiva. Kavat Tomara Sangha Chadite Nariba Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued To say nothing of ten days, as long as I live, I shall find it impossible to give up your company. <laughs> he says, you know, one moment I can't be separated from you, Raman Rai. And actually Mahaprabhu made two people his personal right hand, left hand associates, Swarup Damodar and Raman Rai. Yeah. Tumi Ami Thakiba eka sange. Suke gawaiba kala krishna kata range. You and I shall remain together at Jagannath Puri. We shall pass our time together in joy. 
talking about Krishna and his past times. Hmm, he's welcoming him to Jagannath Puri. Etabali duhe nija nija kariye gela. Sandhya kale raya punaha asiya milila. After speaking as above, they both separated, departed to their respective places. But then evening time they met again. So that is leading us to the next section, very important section called the greatest things, huh? which we'll do it in the next class. Uh, that means what is the greatest loss? That means, you know, living without any devotees. That's the greatest loss. Huh? And what are the best thing to be? Like that, many, many questions will be asked by Mahaprabhu. And who will answer it? Ramanandara will answer, yeah. Shri Prabhupada ki. Thank you very much.